let's say you're established in presence, or you're established in awareness, or you're abiding as the self, capital S, those fancy terms that point to enlightenment or self-realization. If that is your only experience, meaning that that's your only focal point, which if it totally resonates for you, that's totally great, it can either be a phase that you're into, that you're going through, or it can actually be part of your makeup, but there's not many people for which this is actually their makeup to forever just rest as their self and let that be their 99% focus. Yes, there are those people for which that is actually relevant and for which that actually works, but it is my safe estimation that for most of you, that is not relevant. So in other words, if that is all you have and it's not relevant for you, it in a sense disable you from running, let's say, it's an analogy. It disables you, prevents you from being able to run. You're just being able to sit, in a sense, as an analogy. Whereas if self-actualization is all you know, let's say you're into empowerment, you're into law of attraction, you're into creating your dream life, you're into being relational with the world. If that is all you have, then in a sense, you're going to burn yourself out one day. You're going to be running too fast without the, without the, in a sense, legs that can sustain that, without the endurance to sustain that type of running. So for me personally, and I see this in many, many people that I work with and at retreats and all that, is that to have both, to both be focused on self-realization, to have at least some extent of that, allows you to run, but with the endurance you need to actually do the running. In other words, with the clarity you need, with the confidence you need, with the stability that you need, the faith, the level of faith and surrender that you need, a level of consciousness that is aware of itself beyond just the personality, the I am this level, where it is per person beingness, it's impermanent, it's focused experiencing, it's always focused on things, it's a referential, it's always referencing things, and it is that of subject objects, plural. So if you're always in that state of mind, if that's all you know yourself to be, is that person consciousness, the I am this, pointing to the body mind for this, being this inside of a world, if that is all you really know yourself as, and then you start working with teachings that are about affirmations or confidence or empowerment or even authenticity or law of attraction, those type of things, then you don't have the fuel that you need to get very far in those types of realizations or actualizations. Ideally, one is somewhat resonant with both. Now you can be resonant with one more than the other at this timing, that's completely fine. But it, over time, these two become one perfect blend. They become simultaneous. So the I am this is what most people know themselves to be. It's I am this, body, mind, inside of a world. That's our common mode of understanding and feeling ourselves. If you look a little further and you look at the I, I section, the awareness section, you see that in a diagram, the awareness wraps itself around presence energy, which is the presence of creation, which is the presence, the energy that makes up everything that is, the isness of creation, including your body, mind, individuality. So it is awareness that in a sense wraps itself, infuses the presence energy with its own power, its power of cognizance, its power of knowingness. That which, if you just relax right now for a moment, just take a deep breath and give away your thoughts, disown yourself, for just a moment. Just own everything you think you know about yourself. Give it back to God. Give it back to life. Give it back to creation. Don't hold on to any kind of self-knowledge, any kind of thinking. Take a deep breath and sort of become more spacious. Be the space within which all of this appears. And notice that there is an awareness of this moment. There's a cognizant, a knowingness. You are aware of my voice. You've never been able to escape that awareness. You've never been able to have an experience without that spacious awareness, being aware of it, being wrapped around the experience. So in whatever way presence energy forms itself or presents itself to you as awareness, that awareness will be automatically, inseparably infused into that experience. You can see that awareness wraps itself around presence energy, meaning creation. So all of creation, all portions of creations are aware all portions of existence are conscious. And I call it consciousness there. If you see in the thin sort of 
sphere that surrounds the uh, presence energy, I write down consciousness, referring to the fact that awareness now is aware of something. There is a subject-object relationship, the subject being awareness, the object being, depending on the level of consciousness, either I am, at which stage the object is presence itself, this moment itself, creation itself, essence itself, substratum itself, isness itself. But if that further individualizes itself and that same awareness collapses itself around a singular sort of focal point within presence energy, so out of all that presence energy creates, if you just focus on one localized portion inside of that presence energy and you look at that for a while, which we've all been doing, we call it the body-mind, then at some point you start feeling or awareness starts generating this base identity feeling, I am this. It's kind of logical, no? If you keep staring at something, you just become identified with it. You start to feel it as if it's yours. So on a sort of universal scale, awareness in all these different multiplications, in all these different individualizations, have become, at different focal points, identified with the sense of I am this, something specific inside of all that is.